Hey, good morning. Welcome back to the Farm Life Outfitters channel. Uh, today we're going to give you a tour of our garden. Uh, it's uh, mid-October. I think it's like October the 21st or so. And uh, things are winding down in the garden, or have been for a while. We, uh, we've got some fall things planted. We've got some stuff growing in the greenhouse. But uh, mainly we have been focusing on the forest. So um, we, we've picked up some chestnuts. We've been picking up all the persimmons. Uh, that are in our yard and freezing the pulp. Uh, Michelle's made a couple of persimmon puddings which are delicious. Um, we have been picking up pecans from our yard. Uh, this is not really something we've eaten but we've uh, we've got a ton of acorns this year in the forest and so we haven't picked those up. We've been moving our pigs uh, around our land and letting them clean up the acorns and the cows and the sheep they they all love the acorns and so it's been a, a bumper crop for sure. Uh, the fruit trees and the uh, nut trees around uh, are just loaded. Um, and I don't know, that that's usually, uh, old timers say that that means that we're gonna have a hard winter, but uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's in store for us this year, this winter. Um, I hope we get a cold winter. We, we need some cold weather. Um, it, it's been a while since it's been really cold, like super cold for weeks at a time and, and that's what we need to kill off some of the pest and the bugs and the, all that stuff so hopefully this year this winter will be cold at some point um, right now it's not it's probably 80 degrees out here now which is unusual um, we haven't had a frost yet uh, which is also unusual for late October mid to late October um, we are in central North Carolina and typically you know we'll have a first frost somewhere around the first to mid October um, so it's 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 time for one I keep expecting to, to see one but I think for the next week is they're they're calling for 70 degrees and, and 50 at night so no frost in sight so I'm just gonna take you around and show you what we've got going on uh, let you see what what we're doing in the greenhouse and uh, the things that we have growing outside all right, here's a, a couple of tomato plants that we have in the greenhouse. There's one there and there's one. So these are uh, actually grafted tomato plants. It's my first time grafting. So I had a few that were successful. You can see down there the stake that was holding the graft together. So that's uh, taking a rootstock variety, which is disease resistant and more vigorous and cutting it into and then uh, putting a fruiting variety that that, you, that we want on top of that so the the rootstock was called uh, estamino and then these uh, these tops were um, big beef that one's really taken off um, here we have some kale and some lettuce and here we have some more Kale, I believe. I'm, tr I'm trying to keep things started. Um, we got a cucumber. So this variety, one of my friends gave me this plant. It's uh, it's for greenhouse production uh, because the flowers don't have to be pollinated. It's uh, it's a self-pollinating cucumber. There's another tomato that I found in the garden. Just a volunteer tomato. So. That's going to be a, a mystery tomato. Uh, we have a couple collard plants there. And then we have this massive gourd plant that's taken over everything. It's, it was planted outside, but it came into the greenhouse through the windows. There's another one of my tomato grafts. We're just doing some testing. I'm interested in, in grafting um, probably 50 to 100 plants next year for my tomato production. So I'm just doing some testing. Here's the uh, gourd. This is a birdhouse gourd. There's one of the, oh, that one's huge. Look at that. It's probably one of the biggest, biggest ones. I only see three or four. But this plant has some uh, beautiful flowers, especially early morning when it's cool. They're, they're white and they, they really open up. There's another gourd. There's a couple back there. So we'll we'll pick those and let them dry out, and then we'll drill a hole in them and clean them out and 
hang them up for uh, birdhouses. Um, we like to have uh, purple, they're, they're mainly for purple martins. If you hang them up on a line, the uh, purple martins will come and nest in those gourds. Wow, there's more than I thought there were. Here's another huge one. There's one back there. I'm surprised I haven't really looked at it. But this is only uh, like one plant. Pretty sure this is one plant. Which is spread out all around the whole greenhouse. It's amazing. Here's our, our rosemary. Someone actually gave us that last year and I planted it over next to the garden and I didn't like it there. Well, no, I take that back. I did like it there, but I finished the greenhouse and I wanted it to be here. We're going to do more herbs in this space next year. So it survived basically three transplants. Here's some sage, which usually dies back every winter. All the stems die back. All right, here's some lettuce that I just put out here this week. I don't know, probably 50 plants, 50 transplants. And then we have lots of collards. Those are looking really good. I think there's about 100 collard, collard plants out here. They've been in the ground about a month or so. And over here we have some volunteer squash. And we have some uh, pop choy, which is a really beautiful plant. And delicious. It's nice in stir fry or uh, salad. And then on this side we have some radishes, which I've been eating raw. Uh, I've been trying to eat one or two a day if I can, if I remember. And then out here is where our, to our tomato patch was. And we have uh, planted wheat and radishes and uh, turnips as a cover crop. We. Um, we spent quite a bit on fertilizer this spring for our tomatoes, and we didn't want that washing away in the in the winter time. We did, didn't want our, our topsoil to wash away, and so we planted this uh, about two weeks ago, I guess. And it's nice and green. There's a radish. So this is going to hold the nutrients in place all winter. The, the wheat and the radishes and the turnips will take up those excess nutrients and then in the spring we'll lay these tarps out and kill the kill the the crop which will put the nutrients back into the soil and then we'll plant our tomatoes here's our um, our method of killing the grass so we're we're going to be using this space here for uh, something exciting. I don't want to really reveal it yet. You may already know, but uh, this space will look completely different next year. That will likely be revealed on the next garden tour video. So stay tuned for that. Let's see, we have uh, turnips that are just sporadically throughout the garden. Uh, this was a space that we had cleared off with some equipment. There are several stumps here, and so I just broadcast turnip seed out here where they were, the, the dirt was bare. So you can see here where I've added compost in the past, and there is no compost. You can see that there's a huge difference. Some of these turnips have been huge. I don't see any that are absolutely huge, but I pulled one the other day that was probably a pound. And there's a few more turnips. This spot doesn't get any sun this time of the year, so I don't expect these to get much bigger. You don't realize how quickly the uh, daylight, uh, how, how quickly you, you lose daylight from August to October. So I planted these in August, and this spot was getting daylight. 
can see those trees there blocking it. But in August when I planted it, it was getting daylight, but now it's shaded. So I don't expect those to get much bigger. Um, here's our pumpkins. We've gotten a couple. There's one in there. There's probably three or four pumpkins out here of different varieties. So hopefully it'll be enough to get a taste test and to save a few seeds. Here's a, a nice cooking variety. Not sure what they're called. The the packet was called tan pumpkins. This is something I got from someone, so I'm not sure what they are. The girls still have a couple of flowers out here. Winding down, winding down the garden, getting ready for winter time, which I, I can't wait. I love cold weather. I can't wait for winter. I like to come outside and work when it's cool and I like to go in the woods and uh, hunt and just explore when there's no ticks and mosquitoes and things like that to have to worry about so I can't wait for cold weather yeah so we're, we're just winding it down around here we have uh, one more uh, chicken butcher date and we have three pigs that we're going to butcher and two lambs that we're going to butcher and a steer that we're going to butcher so uh, winter time is the time to fill up the freezer to sit back and enjoy the harvest that you had uh, in the summertime uh, time to butcher and fill up the freezer full of meat and uh, just enjoy the weather enjoy the shorter days time to sit in the house and read and plan and do some things inside so Anyway, thank you for uh, thank you for joining me today for this garden tour, the uh, Homesteaders of America Garden Tour, October 2020.